In late 1805, following the Battle of Trafalgar, where the French Navy lost 14 ships of the line, First Lord of the Admiralty, Lord Barham, withdrew the Royal Navy blockade of the French Atlantic ports. He believed that the enemy, severely weakened, would not launch another major offensive, at least until after the coming of winter. However, Barham underestimated the strength of the remaining French fleet at Brest. Exploiting the withdrawal, Napoleon ordered two squadrons to raid British trade routes across the Atlantic, aiming to cause economic damage while avoiding direct confrontation with British naval forces. On December 13, 1805, the two newly formed French squadrons sailed unopposed, splitting up two days later. Contra-Admiral Jean-Baptiste Villaume headed for the South Atlantic with six ships of the line, two frigates and two brigs, while Vice Admiral Corentin Urbain Lesseg sailed for the Caribbean with a force consisting of five ships of the line, including the 120-gun Imperial, two frigates and the corvette. The British Admiralty only learned of their departure on December 24th and pursuit squadrons were not dispatched until January 1806, by which time the French had vanished into the Atlantic. Meanwhile, Vice Admiral Sir John Thomas Duckworth, stationed off Cadiz, acted on his own accord and abandoned his post to pursue yet another French squadron of Contre-Admiral Allemande, reported near the Savage Islands, which was homebound. Despite his efforts, the French eluded him and Duckworth returned to his usual station off the Spanish naval base of Cadiz. During his journey to Cadiz on 23 December, he met Captain Charles Brisbane, a commander of a convoy escort who had narrowly escaped the Caribbean-bound French squadron led by Vice Admiral Le Sag. Brisbane's convoy had been scattered by this encounter, prompting him to seek support from the Royal Navy. Duckworth, learning of the enemy presence in the Atlantic, immediately set course northwest, where he indeed spotted an enemy squadron on Christmas Day. After a pursuit until sunset, the British Admiral realized he was chasing not Le Sac, but Contra-Admiral Willomé's squadron. Despite closing in, Duckworth called off the chase, fearing three of his leading ships, which were far ahead of the rest, would be overwhelmed before reinforcements arrived. Villaume, on the other hand, continued to head for the South Atlantic. After he had dispatched the frigate to inform the Admiralty of the French presence in the Atlantic, Duckworth continued on his westward course, heading for the Windward Islands, in order to resupply before returning to Cadiz. On January 19, 1806, he reached Basse-Terre in St. Kitts, where he was joined by additional British ships. Meanwhile, Le Sec arrived at Santo Domingo, an important French-held harbor in Hispaniola, on January the 20th. Le Sec reinforced the garrison there and made repairs. On the 1st of February, Duckworth received intelligence that Le Sec's ships were near Santo Domingo. Confident of his superior force, he set sail, gathering more British ships along the way. By February the 5th, Duckworth had detailed information on the French fleet and approached the waters of the enemy port city, ready for a decisive confrontation with Le Sac. On the morning of February the 6th, Duckworth's scouts spotted a French fleet anchored near Santo Domingo. The French under Le Sac were completely taken by surprise, with some officers still on shore. Sensing the French vulnerability, Duckworth advanced swiftly. The French hastily set sail, forming a battle line along the coast with the corvettes and frigates positioned between Le Sac and the coastline. The British Admiral split his fleet into two divisions, with his squadron leading the attack and Rear Admiral Lois's squadron following. The order was given to focus the attack on the front three battleships of the French, Alexandre, Imperial and Diomède. As the British closed in, their faster ships began to outpace the slower ones, causing the British line to break apart with Lois's ships falling behind. Meanwhile, the French had limited room to maneuver due to the proximity of the shore. All they could do was wait. 
for the enemy to arrive. Duckworth's flagship HMS Superb fired the first broadside at the enormous French flagship Imperial. The engagement quickly became general. Despite being heavily outgunned, HMS Northumberland, commanded by Rear Admiral Alexander Cochrane, bravely engaged Imperial. This French Leviathan soon concentrated all her fire on the Northumberland. Fortunately, HMS Spencer came to Cochrane's aid. During the battle, the French ship Alexandre attempted to break through the British line, but was swiftly countered by the Spencer under Captain Robert Stopford. This led to some confusion, with the British briefly firing on HMS Spencer before realizing their mistake. The close quarters duel between Alexandre and the Spencer created a gap in the battle, which Imperial exploited to fire her guns at Duckworth's two leading ships. She inflicted serious damage, particularly on HMS Northumberland, which shielded Duckworth's flagship from destruction. The broadsides of Imperial were so powerful that some cannonballs passed through Northumberland and continued into the Spencer. As the battle intensified, the British Eastern Division of three ships of the line led by Louis joined the fight and overwhelmed the French ship Alexandre by 1035. Severely damaged, Alexandre surrendered shortly after a fire broke out on board. With HMS Spencer now freed up, she set course for Imperial, together with Louis's ship, HMS Canopus. Meanwhile, Captain Pulteney Malcolm of HMS Donegal engaged and crippled the French ship Brave, forcing her to surrender as well. The Donegal then turned to attack Jupiter, ramming her to prevent escape. With no hope left, Jupiter struck her colors, and thus three French ships were rapidly disabled and victory was now only a matter of time. In the chaos of battle, the British ship Atlas fired on the French flagship Imperial before colliding with Canopus. With most of the French battleships captured, the British concentrated their fire on the isolated Imperial, which was still very much in the fight. Intent on preserving his honor, the French admiral chose to beach his ship to avoid capture. The last operational French ship Diomed followed suit, running aground on a coral reef. With no escape, the French crews prepared to abandon ship as the British withdrew, wary of shore battery fire. Meanwhile, the French frigates and corvettes escaped westward, while the British frigates were busy securing their captured prizes. During the battle, the British fleet under Duckworth suffered significant damage, with Northumberland being the worst hit. Despite these setbacks, Duckworth's squadron made swift repairs while monitoring the situation ashore. The French ships Imperial and Diomed, having run aground, were severely damaged and later captured and set ablaze by the British to prevent reuse. French casualties were heavy that day, with over 500 lost on Imperial alone. In total, Napoleon lost around 2,600 sailors, including 1,500 casualties and 1,156 prisoners. The two beached ships were total losses, and three others were captured, reducing the Brest fleet by five ships of the line. The British, by contrast, suffered only 338 killed and wounded. After securing their prizes, the British fleet sailed to Jamaica, where they were warmly received. Of the captured ships, only Jupiter, renamed HMS Maida, was added to the ranks of the Royal Navy. The victory at San Domingo in February 1806, coming just months after Trafalgar, was widely celebrated in Britain and the Caribbean. Duckworth's success restored confidence in commercial ocean travel, particularly in the West Indies, where fear of the French fleet had caused panic. In Britain, both Houses of Parliament praised the squadron and rewards including head money and prize money were distributed. While Duckworth's subordinates received honours, he himself faced criticism from the esteemed Vice Admiral Collingwood, who was the second in command of Lord Nelson at the Battle of Trafalgar. He criticized him for abandoning his post of Cadiz and failing to engage Willemes' squadron earlier. Despite the victory, Duckworth received no personal recognition and later tarnished his reputation with the ill-fated Dardanelle operation in 1807. 
In France, the battle was misrepresented in official reports with exaggerated claims of British losses. However, the true outcome was that the French fleet suffered heavy casualties and significant losses, with only a few smaller ships returning home. The battle marked the last major fleet action in open waters during the Napoleonic Wars, as subsequent engagements like the Battle of Basque Roads took place in more confined areas. The Atlantic campaign continued, with all focus now on Admiral Willomese's squadron. His ships, however, were decimated eventually by a hurricane, leaving only four of the original 11 ships from Brest to return to France.